India's successful rover landing on the South Pole of the Moon marks the beginning of something much bigger than the space race. It could be the start of the next big energy race here on Earth. With the presence of water and a potential fuel source for the next century, let's explore why this region of the Moon is so important and what it could mean for our future. For a while now, scientists and engineers have been toying with the idea of permanent moon settlements, and there's a few benefits to this. First off, scientifically speaking, there's plenty of research to be done to learn more about the formation of the moon, and nations also want to begin mining its resources. All of this is easier if humans have a base to consistently operate from the surface. Now, no country is anywhere close to starting any sort of mining operation, and we'll talk a little bit more about how people could eventually get there. But the first step to all of this would be developing an outpost on the moon. And this is where the South Pole becomes vital. For years, space agencies have been studying the presence of water on the moon, specifically as ice deposits found in permanent shadowed craters at the poles. These are called cold traps, and scientists will be looking to answer just how much water can be found in these cold traps. If there's enough to sustain small teams of astronaut researchers, then the lunar ice can be turned into drinking water used for potential plant research, oxygen, and the hydrogen could be converted into sustainable rocket fuel. That would be a big deal and save space agencies a lot on the cost. Getting anything into orbit costs about $10,000 per pound. So imagine you set up a mining operation, a surface mining operation, oh gathering these water molecules and then bottling it. NASA will certainly be looking to research these coal traps during the Artemis III mission, when two astronauts will be conducting various spacewalks on the moon's surface. And that's planned to launch late 2025, early 2026. Future Artemis missions will land habitat modules down on the lunar surface for a more permanent stay, and other countries will quickly do the same. The long-term goal for all of this is lunar mining, which is labeled as the next big gold rush. This is because the moon is full of REMs, or rare earth metals, like copper, aluminum, iron, titanium, magnesium, and silicon, rare metals that we use in electronics and various tech, and 90% of these can primarily be found in China here on Earth. Countries are looking for creative ways to have their own supply of some of these resources. And aside from these, the real rush is to mine helium-3, a rare isotope that can be theoretically used for nuclear fusion to become the holy grail of clean energy and the answer to fossil fuels. The fusion of helium-3 atoms creates near-infinite energy with zero emissions, making it really attractive to researchers. In a successful use case, helium-3 could do more than just power energy grids around the world. It would also power quantum computing, cryogenics, and help power MRI machines at a more affordable rate. Here on Earth, our atmosphere breaks down helium-3, so we only have small traces of the isotope, whereas the moon doesn't have that barrier, so its surface can collect those particles. Scientists theorize that there's over one million tons of the resource ready to be mined, but the problem with all of this, of course, cost and feasibility. Space missions notoriously get delayed, and we're still years away from the initial steps of developing any operation on the surface of the moon. Engineers and scientists will hope to have robots do most of the work, even in the initial stages of developing outposts. Robots equipped with 3D printers are being engineered to collect resources directly from the surface of the moon to 3D print shelters and stations for astronauts to work in. But once any nation can mine up these resources, a bigger issue will also be getting those resources back to Earth. And that's not to mention the time and cost of actually developing nuclear fusion plants to work and apply that for commercial usage. It's a tall order, and we still have a long way to go. Let's discuss this topic in the comments. What do you think of this generation's new space race? India's recent success has propelled them to be a major player, 
Russia will no doubt keep trying with their Luna program. The US has many more Artemis missions on the horizon, and China has their own plans to land astronauts on the surface of the moon before 2030. So do you think moon mining operations will ever happen? Is it even worth it when the climate crisis is becoming more and more of an immediate issue here on Earth? Let us know what you think.